Is it four o'clock? Thank you, Maria. Okay, I'm calling to order the Finance Committee meeting on Tuesday, June 4th. Um, may I please have an approval of the agenda? So moved. Second. Thank you. By roll call, Joe? Aye. Joanna? Chris? Aye. Peter? Aye. Denise, aye. Thank you. Um, I'm going to open it up for public comments. Okay, I'm <laughs> closing it for public comments. Uh, now I'm looking for any edits or changes to the minutes from February 14th. None. May I have an approval of the minutes? So moved. Second. Thank you. Uh, roll call, Joe. Uh, I abstain. I wasn't there. Okay, Joanna. Chris. Aye. Peter. Aye. Denise. Aye. Thank you. <coughs> All right. Minutes are adopted. And now over to review and discussion of airport fuel revolver increase. Noah, thank you for being here. And I will turn it over to you and Brian as to who leads this discussion. This is actually something that we, Madam Chair, do periodically uh, in a fiscal year under Chapter 44, Section. But we're doing the animal game, right? Yes. We are connect with them. Uh, under Chapter 44, Section 53 E and a half, uh, through a home rule petition, the airport has a fuel. Ryan, I can't hear you. Can you get closer to the mic? We're going to have to, we're going to shut off the air conditioning. That makes me. So, uh, under Chapter 44, Section 53 E and a half, which is the revolving account uh, authorizations, the airport through a home rule petition, uh, probably seven or eight years ago. Uh, was granted the ability to have a revolving account for fuel. Annual town meeting sets the spending cap. It's not the revenue cap, it's the spending cap. The way that the fuel revolver works is at the annual town meeting, we set a, a spending authorization for fiscal 24. It was 6.9 million. All the money in excess of 6.9 million does flow into the enterprise operating fund account and um, where it would be close to retained earnings and be able to be lawfully appropriated at a subsequent meeting. Within chapter 44, section 53 E and a half, it does allow for an increase to the authorization in a revolving fund provided both the select board and the finance committee concur. Um, Noah included a lot of paperwork in, in the packet through the analysis of where we think they're, we're gonna end up. We're asking for an increase um, from 6.9 million to 8.8 .8 million, which will ensure that any fuel bills that are received between this meeting and the end of the fiscal year are able to be paid. Um, it will not make it, it will not have a negative or detrimental impact on the airport enterprise operations itself because we're already well in excess of the amount that had been budgeted for a transfer in. So this will not impact the enterprise fund budget operations in any way. And this is until 6.30. It's until 6.30. 24. And there was, 24. And there so was, incremental yeah. 1.9 million. Uh, yes. So we make a profit on selling fuel? Oh, hold on a second, Joe. Peter was asking a question. I'll come to you in a second. Is, is this solely because of increased traffic? And I think slide three or four. Slide three. So it's not increased traffic, it's increased stage length associated with our aircraft. We're not just a Boston or New York market anymore. Okay, we have residents on the GA side who fly from Florida, Texas, California, um, Rocky Mountain West, and our commercial services on our stage to, to um, commercial airlines flying Chicago. You know, we have Charlotte now instead of just LaGuardia. So traffic is actually down um, significantly, but the aircraft themselves take more a larger amount. Thank you, Noah. Joe, you had a question? Uh, do we make money selling fuel? So we'll go to slide two. So all airports rely on fuel sales as a primary revenue source, not just Nantucket for fiscal year 24, which I've underlined. Um, we budgeted so that fuel revolver overflow from the revolver into our operating fund. We budgeted for 2 million or 18% of our budgeted revenue. So it is a significant source of airport revenue as it is in all our kids. Is that revenue or profit? Oh, oh profit. 
So specifically the two million, the two million overflows problem. Yeah. Thank you. Chris? I think Brian probably. What is the fiduciary purpose of the cap? I say you just can't have a blank check. It's a, it's basically a spending authorization and a spending limit. And this was put in um, before I actually got here in 2014 um, as a way to manage fuel costs and um, also as a way to, during a fiscal year, if there was an impact, it was a way to be able to not put significant strain on the airport enterprise fund budget itself. Because if you remember, if it's budgeted directly in the enterprise fund budget, then once we, it, it would potentially with submit substantial amount over say the 6.9 could have the impact of having a detrimental effect on their operating budget itself. So this is a way to mitigate that and then transfer any excess revenue from the cap above the cap into their operating budget. It's a transfer, it can only be what's above the cap, not right. what's above what you need. That's correct. Oh, that's the other thing. Just to be expected, you know, can you go to the slide that shows, that it's just the looking at sure. it, shows Jeff Blue and American and Bob. Yeah. Okay. Jeff Blue, I understand that one. On an aircraft basis, American, they're bigger planes, is that what you're saying? For American, or they fly further? No, let's go, um, I think slide five, please. So I'm gonna go down, up oh, four, I'm sorry, we're in. Yep. So I'll go to planning tool. So our capture rates, I have three items shown there, capture rate, gallon sold for arriving aircraft, a gallon uplifted per sale. Um, we capture 30% of our general aviation market, that means every general aviation aircraft that arrives. Of the aircraft that arrive, we capture thirty percent. Um, on the commercial side, we capture thirty-five percent of JetBlue, hundred percent of others. JetBlue, um, people forget they're an ultra-low cost carrier. They're looking to pinch pennies wherever they can. They fuel up at their pumps. They negotiate very beneficial. Um, gallons sold per arriving aircraft. On the <laughs> side, eighty gallons per arriving aircraft. On the commercial side, it's hundred gallons for JetBlue. 550 gallons on American Delta and United. That's gallons uplifted for sale for transaction. JetBlue just doesn't take a lot of fuel. Would they, they just top off their tanks or something? But really, they just top off to get just what they need to go back. Whereas um, United, American Delta operate at very busy hubs, um, different price structure. Um, I call it a revenue density. I would. I, I mean, nothing against Jeff Blue. They give us 50% of our um, plane passenger load. But I'd much rather deal with um, United CRJ 550. It's a great aircraft. It's small. It sits 50 people at a time. It takes five to 600 gallons of fuel. I can put them anywhere. Tail short, wingspan is narrow. That, that's what I mean by that. Thing. People always ask, wow, Jeff Blue must take a lot of fuel. <laughs> well, no, they don't. I just didn't understand. Yeah. I never even thought about it. But now I do. It's like getting gas on your cake before you drive over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Getting gas anywhere. So, so just oh, it, I'm sorry. no, no, you. How do gas price compared to the high end? We're higher than high end. We're lower than the bid. And I'd also, you know, I can talk about airports all day. High end is a bit of a different operation. They have two or three private FBOs on the airfield that sell fuel. They compete, they negotiate contracts. We're more similar to the vineyard where each of us own an operator. Uh, and just for the committee's uh, awareness, this is actually on the agenda tomorrow for the select board to uh, act on the request as well, because it is, as I mentioned earlier, a two step process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there any other questions for Noah or Brian? Seeing none, may I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, uh, roll call, Joe. Oh, we didn't hear you, but I saw you say aye. Joanna? Aye. Thank you. Chris? Aye. Stephen? Aye. Peter? Aye. Denise? Aye. That's unanimous. Thank you, Noah. Thank you. Oh, we're halfway there. We're halfway there. Thank you, Noah. You're welcome to stay, and you're not meant to He's going to stay for the next one. That's what I thought he was. Yes. 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 Okay. okay, Brian, over to you, please. Uh -huh. Discuss utilizing town bylaw change for authorizing grant funded capital expenditures. So, as the committee is probably aware, um, at various times throughout a year, the airport has 
potential access to various uh, potential federal grants. Given these, and it's very difficult to plan for them because you never know when they make the money may come up and it can come up at the very last minute. And we have a short window to be able to decide whether we can do it or not. Um, so one of the ways that we had uh, dealt with that difficulty is through a home rule petition, which was uh, House Bill 3792, which was adopted in 2022, which amended the charter to allow for the select board to authorize borrowings, transfers of, a, of money or any other funding source. So they could actually use retained earnings, I believe under the statute if they wanted to, provided that um, it was dealt as an emergency. It can only be used for capital projects. It requires a multi-step process, which we have already started, which is it must go before the airport commission. They have to agree. The select board has to agree. We internally, I think Noah and I decided that it would be very worthwhile if we presented it to the FinCom as well, because you make recommendations on financial expenditures as well. It was an outline that we had to in the, in the bill itself, but we thought it was appropriate. And then it also has to be published in the paper for 15 days, which would give the public an opportunity through a, uh, a request for veto through a warrant article that would have to be acted on at the next special annual or special town meeting, the opportunity to veto this. Okay. So it is, it's not, it's not a blank check that the select board can just authorize them to, uh, to borrow money. It does have hurdles and the next hurdle, well, hurdles, it has a process. Uh, it's already gone to your airport commission as outlined in your packet. It's coming as part of this process, it's coming to you to present it or discuss it. And then tomorrow night, it's going to be presented to the select board. Should they approve it, it'll go to the paper for on Monday to be advertised in the following week. It must be advertised and there's a 15 day time limit in which 10 citizens provided a draft, a warrant article can present that to the town clerk. If it becomes certified, then we lose the ability to expend the money and then it goes before town meeting. Okay, clear. So in the packet, I'm gonna let Noah take you through the entire entirety of the project, but there is an opportunity for the, the airport to have an environmental study, essentially 95% or 90% paid for by the federal government, 5% by the state. We need to, in order to do that, we have a limited time frame to be able to say yes. So we need to actually, for the first time, exercise this allowance in, in the charter. Okay, thank you. So the piece, the article at the end, you have in the newspaper, is that going to specifically talk about this use it, of the money? It's specifically going to say that at the at the airport commission meeting on May 14th, I think it was, and at the June 5th select board meeting, the select board, using their powers under the relative and relative section of the charter um, use their powers to authorize a borrowing for the airport and concerned citizens have the ability to object by submitting a objection in the form of a warrant article to be placed in this case to be placed in the annual town meeting but will the 95 and 5 percent which is the most important part be? it'll be lost if, ten, if if they if people object we is cannot go for any, any 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 yeah that we want to state that uh, it's what, I, think it's 5 I think that we actually have never talked about what the ad would look like because we've never had to use it. Well, my suggestion is that I think we that probably that would put what the value is and what the grant money is yeah. and what the airport's ultimate amount would be that they would ultimately pay. Yes, okay. I think that would be a good idea. I'm just trying to mm -hmm. stop the anti airport. Yeah. Well, I also yeah. think because it's an environmental right. study that I think it probably is that people will be happy. So hopefully that will also stop it. But, um, Noah did a great job of putting up information relative to that in the packet. So if there's questions about that, he certainly can answer them. Noah, do you want to just run us through it quickly? Sure. Uh, I'll skip column one because from him Brian went through that. So you know the project project A is continued environmental monitoring. Specifically, it's an FAA AIP grants. It's the most common type of grant ever received. 95% is funded by federal and state government, 5% is our local share. I'm anticipating a task order of $316,850, but I think I'm requesting $400,000 just in case we see some cost creep. The reason that I'm here now, even though we began this process in 2021, we haven't needed to exercise it until now. 
And this is because we realized the need after the 2024 ATM cycle, we've seen it before you and been found Capcom explaining our projects. This happened after that. And it would require um, the airport the ability to accept the grant in the late July, August, early August time frame. So prior to this fact, mm -hmm. that's why we're not waiting until the first. Put the next slide. So project purpose and need, you know, I want people to know what, what they're getting here with this project. So the airport has a state recognized and model rare species monitoring improvement. And this really goes back to the, the management we've done for 50 years has been focused on making the airport safe for aviation, you know, keeping trees from growing, keeping scrub oak out, mowing again and again. And then we put up this giant fence around the airport. What does that fence do to exclude these deer? So all of these rare plants, that either get crowded out by scrub oak and pitch pine elsewhere or browse by deer. You know, they have an unrestricted growth environment in the airport. And I'll show that in some subsequent slides. Um, but the airport capital projects, when we do a capital project where we receive an AIP grant, um, these projects may require ongoing ecological monitoring. And the FAA funds this monitoring when it's required by federal or state agency. The FAA wants to be a good ecological steward of the airport. And in the state of Massachusetts, the Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program, they, they really do drive most of the rare species work that the airport and other municipal agencies have to do. Um, these requirements that um, Heritage gives, they're up to five years of ongoing monitoring and other type of work. FAA projects under AIP only have a four-year grant period. And a lot of times these grants um, are now broken up by construction seasons, where we're not through construction for two years, then we only have funding available for two years and we still may have three more years of ongoing monitoring that quite honestly, the Fed should pay for it, not, not the airport and not airport users. Um, so the need, we need to find a funding vehicle that reconciles um, this. And the solution is that the FAA said, we will issue you a standalone AIP grant. We're not going to include all of your ongoing monitoring costs and the construction grants. We'll wrap a bunch of these together and give you a separate Go to the next slide, please. So here's a picture from our ecological management plan and the areas that are highlighted are where we do our work. Each subunit has a different set of tasks associated with it. Um, we do work all over the airfield. Some of it is mitigation area, some of it is active mitigation, some of it is ongoing passive monitoring. And we also monitor um, plant transplants in various areas. <laughs> One, please. Um, so on the left picture, each green dot is a single stem of um, liatris or New England blazing star. So you know, if you might go walk your dog through conservation property and see three or four, you'll see I, I don't know eight thousand just in the building alone. On the upper right is sampling blue eyed grass. We actually had so many sampling blue eyed grass plants during the survey. Instead of GPSing each and every one of them, we had to have the consultant just set some random boxes of a known length and width and GPS just the plants in that box and extrapolate the population from that. It's not physically possible to count all of them. So this is deer food if the if the fences weren't. Yes. Yeah, so especially um no. the, the plants on the left is lion's foot. So uh, Forget if the state status is threatened or in danger. Um, but deer love that if they can find it, you know, when they have access to it. It's actually, that's my favorite of the rare plants, flowers in fall. The bottom one is New England Blazing Star. That's what one of those look like. They look like purple thistle. Then in the upper right is sampling blue eyed grass, but in the summer after it's flowered, and it's marked at the survey state. That's one of the pieces of work that we have to do relating to uh, taxi light. That's the actual color. Yeah. yeah. So the, the the bright blue is the surveys surveys. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's really it's not the script after it flowers, but it has a corn flower blue flower when it does flower in the spring. Oh. So that's just marking it for future transplant. And then the picture that didn't show up in the conversion was a newly transplanted area. And I think was that my last slide? Yes. For you? Yep. So what I have in this project is I have three years of ongoing environmental monitoring from 2024 to 2026. 
I'd like to see this go forward or I lose out on a year of monitoring and a year of funding. You know, just a third of that total, maybe $105,000. If it doesn't go forward, I just have to bring it to my 2026 project list that we're just beginning planning on. So that's why, at least from the airport standpoint, we recommend approval. We think it's pretty non-controversial. We think it supports multiple airport. But what would the result be? I mean, you know, what is it gonna can there be a positive or a negative result? Um uh, uh, what, what they find? Could it make us not be able to touch a certain part of the airport? Or I don't know. If, you know what's the reason for the so survey? Good question. So we since at least 1998, the airport has had what's called a conservation and management permit with the state division of fish and wildlife. Um, and it's basically the permission slip for capital projects. If we have to, well, let's take the south ramp, for example. South ramp, I think we have to relocate one sampling blue light dress. 20,000 on the airport, but, you know, it's like the prodigal son or the lost sheep. Each one is special and needs to be accounted for. The permit is my permission slip to pick it up and move it. And I have requirements in perpetuity to steward these plants to make sure that population you know, is stable long term. It can vary from year to year. And each project could impact a different set of plants or require a different set of conditions. And that's what's all wrapped up in the monitoring and mitigation. Can you relocate into a different part of the island? No, because I don't have control over a different part of the island. Right. I can confirm seemed, their continued existence. Yeah, right. it just it seemed like it would be easier to move them then somewhere else. That's <laughs> <much easier. laughs> so, my stuff. How much again is the appropriation for this? So I'm asking for four hundred thousand. The task order that I anticipate entering into with my consultant and sub consultant is three hundred and sixty thousand. So I'm building in a potential buffer in case there are open lines. And I can give you an example of why I have a buffer. I'm aware of many reasons for buffers. <laughs> where was this funded in the past? Where, where did the money come from? Traditionally, um, there were two things. It's the airport would just do the work. Then we got savvier and realized that, oh, under the AIP program, you know, Congress has enabled state agencies with jurisdiction that require work for that work to be funded under the AIP. So we're leveraging our grant opportunities better than we used to. Um, our mitigation requirements are also more complicated. If the airport has a finite amount of land, we've identified an amount of land and a number of things we're going to do. So to get to the net, benefit that were required, the state is acting us to manage harbor species more and more intensive. So that could be longer duration um, events, more items, and sort of five years of monitoring in some cases instead of one two. So it's $400,000 that used to be for a continuation, maybe an expansion of a program that used to be funded from general operations from the airport's budget. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think generally, generally the airport used to fund a lot of these requirements about seeking the appropriate federal grants. And so what percentage of this is coming from the town's general fund? None. Zero. 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 So there's four hundred thousand dollars of federal funds. No, ninety five percent. Ninety five percent between state and federal. All the select board is going to do, hopefully tomorrow night, is authorize us to use a borrowing mechanism to borrow the funds and then repay them with the grants. And then at when the project is complete or when we think it's time to permanently borrow, then the airport will use retained earnings like they typically have in their borrowing program, pay off their share, and we're done. So it's actually a way to leverage the federal money to pay something that they were paying 100% of previously. Why do you think we weren't spending $10 million previously? Well, no. So, but what we were spending, they were spending three or 400,000. They were spending the same amount of money, but right. getting a much bigger 
they're yeah, actually they're saving money. more money in their operating budget by leveraging the federal grants versus them paying it themselves. But do we need to do this? I mean, is it necessary? Yes, because we'll lose the grant and then he's going to lose at least one year of monitoring because the grant opportunity will allow us to start earlier. So if we don't do the grant, then the airport will have to put this in as a capital project for 26, for ATM 2025 to start in 26. So Noah will not only lose the federal money and state money, but he'll also lose that one year of time on the monitoring as well. So it would be a bigger net loss by not doing this, in my opinion. But so has the state or the federal government given us a bill that says how, or some sort of uh, itemized situation and how much it's going to cost them $10 million? Where are you getting the tax? We're, I mean, we're paying 5%. It's 400. It's, we're paying 5% of 316,000. So it's going to, airport share will be 15. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. We're borrowing the 400. Got it. Got it. And then, air, then it. yeah. Okay. That's what I was saying. Yeah. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. It's good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you can almost build a Harbor Master's office. Yeah, really? <laughs> and Half of it. <laughs> so, okay, you know, I mean, I personally, when Noah and I talked about it, I think that it's rather than lose the time and then have to have the airport expend mm -hmm. the full value, this makes sense to do uh, on a project that, that's important to the airport. Any other questions, sir? It's a little befuddling, but the financial aspect, so it seems to make sense. <laughs> I'd like to go to my yard and take care of the plants. <laughs> <laughs> the deer do that at my yard. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Joe or Joanna, do you have any questions? No. Okay. Thank you. No, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you, Joanna. Okay. Can I have a motion? No move. Second to adopt. Motion to adopt. Okay. Second, Chris. Thank you. Uh, roll call, Joe. Aye. Joanna. Aye. Chris? Aye. Stephen? Aye. Peter? Aye. Denise? Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you, Noah. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Okay. So next on the agenda is the item debrief of annual town meeting. There was a meeting after the town meeting and where several folks got together and talked about how could it go better? And then that was actually shared with the select board, which Chris very helpfully told me the time so I could send to all of you. And as I, as I had been in the meeting, I didn't really need to see it again. So there we go. And then I copied what Libby had actually presented at the select board and put it in the email that I sent to all of you. So at this point, I would just go around to each member and just ask anything you'd like to add to this. And I will then write it up and send it to Libby early next week. Unless you want to lift my iPad in the back of my hands. So yes. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'll start with you, Chris. I thought it was a good list. I appreciate that. I appreciate the work we put together. You know, we used to have one of these just for kind of our FinCom process mm -hmm. after every town meeting, I think, back in the, to the day board days, which was useful. All this, this was such an interesting town meeting that I think the larger group getting together was probably useful. Um, and I think most of what, what uh, my thoughts were covered. I do think we need to be willing to do more within town meeting, probably, and less ahead of town meetings. I don't think the ahead of town meeting stuff gets, uh, there's too much. I don't think people are able to do their homework anyway, but I think the ideas that came up around how you explain things a little bit better during town meeting. And we still have town meeting for a while, Curtis, so I think it's okay. I'm just sitting it's okay. I can see, I can see your expression. So I think it's okay to improve on what we're what we have to grow with we have to advance today. The um so that was um you know more of um some of the explanatory stuff within the town meeting. I think it's gonna be helpful. Even explain the process that's gone through to get us to this point. I think one of the challenges this year is when you do have a high profile item that attracts a lot of people that wouldn't otherwise be there. Well, of course they haven't done the work because they're not focused and but they feel free to I jump in with the questions and things. The only piece that I thought I thought it was excellent to point out the policy issues being confused on the town meeting floor mm -hmm. as part of the notes from that. And I think a little more can be done there, both on our part and maybe in the meeting around 
those things are deemed to be non-binding. Mm -hmm. Like I think maybe going forward, we adopt a policy of spending just about zero time on anything, both at this table. You know, maybe we just adopt a policy that says we're taking no action. If you want to come and give us yes, two sir. minutes, fine. We're taking no action on anything that's non-binding. It's the sense of the meeting, and hopefully you the moderator can jump on that as well. Um, might clean things up. But that was those were my questions. Thank you. Uh, Stephen? Um, I think more can be done with visual displays. Uh, I mean, it, well, one thing that struck me was we we're looking at not even like a widescreen computer projection. It's like one of those old ones that you can't even buy anymore. That's like a perfect square. And the giant font, font size makes sense, but you can't read the totality of emotion. Mm -hmm. uh, and when we get into things like district map changes, zoning stuff, sometimes there's a map that's readily available. And even when they are, they're usually not all that helpful. They're you know overlaid with colors and things that don't make sense to people where we have a pretty versatile GIS mapping system where you could <laughs> turn on and off sewer district overlays and make it a 3D map so people can see points of interest. And um, I don't know exactly what the answer to that is, except that on your phone, and anybody who has a computer at the meeting can get better information faster than what's shown on the screen to everybody. Mm -hmm. So, I can be in the front row. Right. So, you know, I, I don't, we are losing the novissimos as, as the people who do the mm -hmm. visual presentations. So, that's an additional challenge to making improvements in this area, but it's also an opportunity to rethink how things are done. And whoever the new person or vendor is to do that might come with new ideas about. How we can, how, and, and I would encourage sponsors also to think about how they're going to present their ideas mm -hmm. with, with visual aids. Okay, anything else? Uh, Spanish and other language translations, mm -hmm. making those, I don't know to what extent they are available today, but making them easier to find. Okay, thank you. Peter? I think we need to get the Spanish speakers to come to the meeting. Well, well this is a bigger problem. Than well, they, they might be connected. Would you go to a meeting if you were looking at 120 articles? Maybe. You can't read them. Okay. Um, yeah, I have a few things. Number one is we talked about putting plain speak above each article yeah. to explain it. I think that's really important. Number two is I don't think we should be changing or adding to articles at town meeting. I think that's just. It becomes a, a, a playground. Number three, I think Sarah needs to have a shut off, shut people off when they're talking way over their time. She just lets them go on and on. And she's sort of, be, she's too nice about it. I think she should have a button to stop people from going. That's it. And lastly, I think we shouldn't allow lawyers. To represent other people or just to represent people? Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> No lawyers. We want lawyers sitting next to me. Yeah. I just think I think we're opening up a can of worms by having lawyers represent individuals who are presenting it. I just think we're it, down the road. It's going to come back to the bite us in the rear. I I agree with you on that point, and I had the experience last night at the short term rental work group where Stephen Cohen introduced the article that we worked on together with others, and. The way it had been going in the meeting was one person would lead their introduction and then somebody else would speak. I didn't have anything to say. And I understand why you got paid attorneys to those people because it works very well. So I can imagine that it is attractive to people who didn't think they got their point across well or maybe they just don't like speaking in public. So you know, for some groups and some people, it's going to be easier to hire attorneys to speak for them. So I think you're right. Unless there's guard guardrails put up for that, it's going to happen tomorrow. And then you have this person has an attorney just to do it, and it's certainly not fair. Thank you. Okay. 
Joanna? Hi. <laughs> um, I had some suggestions about this. I wasn't able to be there at this town meeting, but I did watch it on television. And some of the thoughts that I had were really around the organization of it. And I actually spoke to John Giorgio about what are the ways in which a town meeting could be reformatted, I'll use the word, where maybe you didn't allow it to go past two and a half hours on <laughs> any particular given night and et cetera, et cetera. But I withdrew all of my comments because um, I don't think that people saw them as helpful, which is what they were intended to be. <laughs> so I, you know, all the feedback that I heard was a lot of frustration around how long it was and how the articles are reordered and that people don't stay for the bulk of the things that are super important and that they stay for the articles. I'm going to use the word popular, although that's, I, I hope that you understand that's not really what I mean. Um, and I don't know that there's a way to fix it. And I don't know that going to a different form of government will fix it. But I do know that there's a high level of frustration around who votes on particular things and how long we spend on particular things and how long we actually physically stay in the room. And I don't know if there's a way to improve that. Okay. Thank you, Joanna. Joe? Um, did anybody talk about doing it other than at 5.30 on a weeknight? No, not so far, Joe. I, I looked around that room, and it is not representative of the population of Nantucket. Yep. Not at all. And it's all very nice to, to have a meeting that is only attended by people who can afford to take an evening off and don't have kids to take care of. And um, But I, I think we're, I, I think it, it, we, we're losing a big chunk of, um, the population. Yeah. Well, weekend day every other year. So they yeah, go we back used to, right? Well, no, I think it's... We haven't swapped the last couple of years. Swap, yeah. It used to swap. Yeah, yeah Saturday and then weekday. And... I had Saturday morning at 9 o'clock or something like that. I think Libby has more religious holidays than at least I know about. So those are some of the considerations. Mm -hmm. Denise? But the demographic doesn't look any different on Saturday mornings than it does on Tuesday nights, by the way. That's true, because people are working Saturdays. Libby? I'm just going to say, we've gone several Saturdays. We've gone several weekdays. No matter what, someone complains about it. There's no good day of the week, and there's no good time. That's everything that you do <laughs> <laughs> for 25 years. <laughs> Okay, um, Ted, I see your hand is up, but I'm going to wait and get through the committee first, and then I will I will call on you for your comment. Thank you. So, uh, Joe, anything else? No. Okay. It's a cumbersome form of government. That's yeah. the nicest thing I can say. Hello, I don't know if you can hear, but there's no sound. There's um, absolutely no sound. You've dropped out. Joe's hearing us, right? Joe. Uh, Libby's here. Yeah, Libby heard us. Well, he can't hear me say that there's sound. I'm not muted. Am no, I, is that Ted muted. speaking? Ted, we can hear you if you are if you can hear us. We had this yesterday, too, with the with the people. The uh, Iverson had trouble hearing. Yeah. I think the problem the is sick. <laughs> I I think the problem yesterday was some of the people in the room were not speaking clearly or um, in a higher volume. Okay. All right. All right. Um, from my perspective, I would like to go back to no amendments on town floor. They have to be submitted to the moderator at least two or three days in advance. Uh, hello, I don't know if you can hear me. I may be the only person on, Ted Gilletti here, but there's no audio coming out I from FinCon. The, chat, that I, we can the that. chat is not available from the committee Zoom account okay. well, for some reason. Okay. We can hear you, but you can't hear us. So I don't know what to do for that. There's no audio coming out. None. We should probably put those out. Right, we write them a note. <laughs> Everyone else can hear. Yes. I don't have his email. Does anybody know his email? 
It's on his end. Yeah, Three, definitely. One, Alex, and here. She left. Three, hold that. <laughs> she left. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Kim, maybe she would try to rejoin. I don't know. Okay. Um, I would like to see, I remember way back when, and it probably says it in the town meeting recommendations, amendments should be to the moderator several days ahead to make sure that they're valid and within scope that, that you have to bring 700 printed copies. In fact, when people emailed me about, I want to make an amendment, I told them you have to send it to Sarah a week in advance. You have to bring 700 printed copies. All of a sudden it's Denise's rules. But the, at the same time, I remember that from somewhere. And I think amendments on the floor that no one else has seen just doesn't help the voters be able to understand the implications of it. And so I, I just, I, I would love to see us be able to tighten up the amendment process uh, going forward. So, because it's pretty easy to email the town moderator. She answers all the time, um, amendments. And then Peter had asked me on the day, you know, Denise stand up and say more. And I'm always happy to talk, but David Gray is going to explain why sewer better than Denise can explain why David wants sewer. So I am more than happy to maybe stand up at the beginning of the meeting and say the finance committee spends all this time doing blah, 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 blah. And the article sponsors themselves are the best <laughs> advocates for their articles. Yep. And if, if it needs to be clarified more, I can absolutely stand up if, if I'm the chair, by the way, I'm not saying I'm going to be the chair forever. So, uh, <laughs> so that, yeah, yeah, yeah I, don't think it's, it's, I think it's maybe, you know, where people are questioning the process. The yes. Process. Yes. And so where you get up and say, hey, the finance committee did do the work. Yeah. And for these reasons felt this was the right. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. I did it on a couple of things, but I probably could have done it on more. I think part of the problem with this meeting was everybody was so emotionally exhausted after the first night that, that a lot of people didn't have a fight and then we sit down. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and so, well, I, I never mind. I'm going to have a process um, improvement that at the special town meeting, if Bobby DaCosta sits midway down the row, I'm going to ask him to please sit on the aisle because watching him leap up and make six people move every time he left up, I was going to say, Bobby, end of the aisle, please. Please sit there. You can talk 10 times, but please don't make these six people leap up every 15 minutes. So yeah, I'm going to ask Bobby to sit at the end of the aisle. Sit at the end of the row. That's my process improvement, watching him leap up. So, yeah, can't wait to share that with him. <laughs> Maybe he already heard me. So, good. Okay. Um, all right. Well, just share, I mean, yeah, please. I'm sure we all have our favorite articles where we're shaking our heads over. Um, for me, you know, and for me, it's like a case statement. Like, why did this one fail? I know, I, you know not, I'm not talking 59 60. The one for the, um, $3 million. The $3 million. If there's one thing I think everyone in this town agrees on is that we need employee housing for down employees. Yeah, it doesn't matter where you are on the spectrum for affordable housing. I know plenty of people who hate the idea of how much money we spend on affordable housing, but everyone thinks we need to house down employees. So the fact that that one failed yes. is one that calls me the most. So I'm thinking about why we sort of all of us didn't do a better job of getting that one across the whole line. Mm -hmm. It is for me at least been helpful to think through. I mean, after the fact, because I'll admit, at the after the third day, I was thinking, number one, it was a commercial for, for Curtis. That's why we go to town council. That the three days, there's lots of little sound bites you could save and put into commercials. Secondly, I just wondered why we put the work in that we do. So I did an analysis of the 112 articles. Six failed. And then 14 were motioned differently than we had recommended or the planning board had recommended. And they weren't bad, I mean bad. They weren't horrible. One was further, a couple were further study. One was, you know, postponed indefinitely, which is almost a fail. But overall, if you look at it, 95% of what we worked on and the planning board worked on went through as recommended. There you go. So. Works on the edge. So, oh yeah, Bobby, I was just talking about you. Oh, yeah, it was good, all good. So, so with that, let's see. I'm gonna wait a minute. Hugh Jackman. I'm just gonna figure if I talk about him, it'll appear. So, <laughs> thought I'd try, but there you go. So I, I. 
took from that that although it felt over the three days like hard work that we spent a lot of time and look how it went actually between us and the planning board it was actually in the most part uh voted the voters did vote as recommended by the eight uh the two committees that make recommendations so you know good news after the fact i guess is where i was going with that but the ones that failed particularly the three million dollars that was a very disappointing fail so anyway that's okay anything else on town meeting Cur uh, curtis would you like to say something I, I just am always curious why one third of the warrant is zoning. And couldn't we do zoning in a separate meeting um, and just get rid of it because it takes up all the space? And, and you know, I just think do zoning is a different thing. Okay, thank you. I'll add you to our list. It really doesn't affect everybody. Yeah. I mean, well, some fun. of it does. Yeah, yeah. 59 and 60. Well, then if it's going to affect the town, <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, Joanna. Joanna had her hand. Okay. Yeah, that uh, that that is kind of along the lines of the part of what I wanted to suggest is that if we could divide it up into categories where people knew what was coming in those categories and make choices about where they should attend. But the thing that I've heard you all say that I wanted to comment on, whether it was you know um, the piece about zoning being separate or the piece about having attorneys attend or the the piece about making amendments, not being able to make amendments on the town floor. I think that, you know, one of the things that I'm concerned about is that it looks to me like when I listen and watch those those meetings and have been many, many times, that there are people who are attempting to govern from the floor of the town meeting. And while some of that is the intended purpose, this business of changing the budget and changing the and amending articles to be completely different on there with 400 or 500 people present. Like, I don't understand how that works effectively for us. And I think that if we're going to look at anything and make changes that that may, I don't know if it's a procedural change um, or if it's a way in which we inform people about how they're able to give feedback change. I don't understand the difference myself. Right. So I, I think that just as an observer of this, it very much appeared that people are in the audience making decisions for very large groups of people and making changes on the fly that I'm not sure everyone understood the impact of. And and there are also people that probably didn't go and watch the deliberations of the planning committee and the finance committee over about the, about the article. Right. Yeah. In, in, in the schedule that you had, I think you had the dates at which um, we discussed each article, mm -hmm. and that might be an interesting add to the um, list of um, items to, to to for the meeting to have to have a place where someone knew that at three twenty one, this is Chris's expertise, but at three twenty one of the finance committee on the twenty third of January, uh, this this item was discussed. Yeah, Joe, Libby and I actually talked about that at the beginning of ATM season, as I lovingly call it. And some of it we can do way far in advance and give people a schedule. And some of it is dependent on are the sponsors available? Do we have enough information yet? So we can't, unfortunately, lay out all 112 for the whole December to March. Uh, but we could lay out as many as we could and do it that way. So that's a Libby. But I don't think we're going to solve these challenges by expecting every town meeting to order watch all the fin companies all plan. They well, might watch the ones that interest them the most, right? So right. anyway, okay. Anything else from anybody? Otherwise I will close this agenda item. Thank you for following that. Yeah, of course, of course. No, it's good. Um, okay, and then the date of our next meeting is July 9th. And it's, uh, it's fully remote. It's fully remote, mm -hmm. can you get a meeting room? That's when we do a committee assignments. That's when we elect a chair and a vice I, chair. I didn't ask her, but I could. Could you please try? Yeah. Let's see if we can do that one because I would hate to miss the trailer. So if we could. Is there a schedule for STM? Yes, there is a schedule for STM. <laughs> it's on it's on the website. At, at um, 
And just so you know, uh, we start to review warrant articles on Monday, July 15th at four o'clock, Tuesday, July 16th, Thursday, July 18th, Monday, July 22nd, Tuesday, July 23rd. So I know, yes. And that the warrant has to be adopted by Wednesday, June 26th. So that's the day that the select board will be adopting the warrants. June, June 26th or July 26th? June 26th, the, the select board adopts a warrant, meaning that any articles the select board is putting forward or the planning board is putting forward has to be finalized by June 26th. And then we review them after subsequently. So they're adopting the warrant. We make recommendations as does the planning board. And then they adopt the final warrant with the recommendations on August 7th. Who places the articles in the board? That's the select board. They get to decide the order. I mean, do they really discuss it or do they just say, okay, uh, I mean, Libby, I'll turn that over to you, but I know it's, I would say that, I mean, I know I've spoken to Libby about what I think is a, a suitable order. You know, could we do this before this? Blah, blah, blah. It's just so, my, but Libby, um, for the annual town meeting, the I don't know why there's a notion that the articles aren't already categorized. They they are. If you look at the table of contents, they go financial, a little bit of citizen, depending on what they are, zoning, general, home rule petitions, real estate, roughly. Um, for special, usually whatever the purpose of the special is goes first. Now we have something like I forget 15 articles for the special okay, and so the, all the short-term rental ones are going first i'm sure exactly what order they will be in will be up to the board and we'll you know for the purposes of just getting something on a piece of paper for them to look at we'll just put them in whatever okay. order probably john giorgio says is the most logical and then the board can determine that and then um the other ones will go on as if there's able to be categorized like all zoning or I can't even remember if there's a financial one, but um, the board will determine that. Yeah, go ahead, Chris. Citizen articles generally just the order they were received or alphabetical? No, not, not, not always. I think I, I, I don't think we've thought of grouping non-binding ones together. Mm. I think if we could group non-binding ones together or those that have been determined to be non-binding and continue to remind people throughout that they're mm -hmm. non-binding. So a not. Yeah. Yeah. That's so a good idea. Stay. Yeah, put them at the end. That would be sensible. So good. I'll add that to the list. Libby, I'll send you this list next week. I won't get to it before that. No problem. I know you're dying for this list. But you're I am. Really. <laughs> Anything town meeting related. I know, Libby. I know. All night by you. Okay. All right, folks. With that, I am going to see if is there anything else? I have a motion to adjourn. I like that, Chris. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Second. Roll call, Joe. Second. Uh, <laughs> good. <laughs> Joanna? Aye. Okay, Joe. Aye. There we go. Chris. Aye. Stephen. Aye. Peter. Aye. Denise. Aye. Why did you call my name? I'm going to stop doing that one of these days. All right. Most meeting adjourned. Thank you, Maria. Brian. Thanks, Thank you, Liz.